Welcome to my channel, Arts and Literature. Today we will discuss about the study of poetry. Right pointing arrow what is high seriousness? How does Arnold evaluate Chaucer in his The Study of Poetry? Matthew Arnold is one of the influential writers of the Victorian age who is also the first modern critic. He can be called the critic's critic. Arnold's The Study of Poetry is a wonderful creation in the history of English literature criticism where he discusses about poetry, its function, its future, its characteristics, criticism of life, high seriousness, estimates, French poetry, poets, etc. Arnold gives a lot of importance to high seriousness in his The Study of Poetry. He looks for high seriousness in poetry which means the combination of the finest and with the fullest and deepest insights such as is found in the poetry of Homer, Dante, Shakespeare, etc. High seriousness is a term which means the serious, grave, sober, solemn, and persistent treatment of the subject matter in a simple and intense manner. According to Arnold, Poetry is a criticism of life which must be serious to interpret life. The superiority of poetry over history lies in its possessing of higher truth and high seriousness. Higher seriousness is the combination of poetic truth and poetic beauty. By poetic beauty, Arnold meant manner and style of poetry. On the other hand, by poetic truth, he meant representation of life in true way, a true depiction of life without any attempts to falsify the facts. In The Study of Poetry, Arnold expresses his idea of truth and high seriousness. As a proper standard for evaluation of poetry, for judging poetry, the significance of this twin requirements of truth and high seriousness is really undeniable. According to Arnold, high seriousness is one of the major characteristics of a classic. Without it, no writings can be considered as classic. He considers Homer, Virgil, Dante, Shakespeare, Milton as classics because their writings are in full of high seriousness. Arnold has a very high opinion about Chaucer. Arnold praises Chaucer for his writings, style, diction, subject matter. But unsurprisingly he also remarks that he is not a classic because he lacks high seriousness. Dryden and Pope are the representative of neoclassical age whom are considered as the masters of the art of versification. Their application of ideas to life may be powerful, but it is not poetical. Arnold claims that their criticism of life has no high seriousness. He very boldly says that they are not classics of English poetry, they are classics of English prose. Arnold estimates Robert Burns to be a great poet but not a classical one. His poetry lacks high seriousness. Arnold gives a positive review on Chaucer. He regards Chaucer as the father of the English poetry. His poetry has largeness, freedom and kindness. Thus, Arnold showers high praise on Chaucer. Arnold says that Chaucer's potic importance is a result of the real estimate and not the historic estimate. The superiority of Chaucer's verse lies both in his subject matter and his style. He writes about human life and naturge as he sees it. Arnold speaks highly of Chaucer's diction and calls it, liquid diction, to emphasize the fluidity in the manner of Chaucer's writing which he considers to be an irresistible virtue. Arnold is an admirer of Chaucer poetry. He mimics that Chaucer's power of fascination is enduring. His superiority lies in the fact that, we suddenly feel ourselves to be in another world. 
His superiority is both in the substances of his poetry and in the style of his poetry. Arnold finds Chaucer's work superior to the French Romance poetry of the 12th and 13th centuries. It was Chaucer who inaugurated Romantic poetry in England. He has shown the power to survey the world from a central, a human point of view. Arnold quotes a line from Chaucer, O Martyr, Sauded in Virginity. In Arnold's opinion, this line has a virtue of manner and movement which cannot be found in any other romance poetry of the earlier centuries. Arnold quotes other lines also to substantiate his statement that Chaucer's poetry possesses liquidness and fluidity. According to him, that poetry which did not impart spiritual strength and consolation on the pattern of a sermon could not be a poetry worth the name. His even emphasis on morality has prevented him from appreciating Chaucer. Arnold remarks that Chaucer is a perpetual fountain of good sense. His poetry has the truth of substance. By the lovely charm of his diction. His movement, he makes an epic and founds a tradition. In spite of all these merits, Arnold says that Chaucer is not one of greatest classics because he has not their accent. To strengthen his argument, Arnold compares Chaucer with the Italian classic Dante. Arnold says that Chaucer lacks not only the accent of Dante but also the high seriousness of the classics thereby the depriving him from the high honor. That's how in his critical essay, The Study of Poetry, Arnold shows not only the merits of Chaucer's poetry but also the shortcomings of Chaucer. Arnold glorifies Chaucer with the remark, with him is born our teal poetry. According to Arnold, Chaucer's criticism of life has languidness, freedom, shrewdness and benignity, but it lacks high seriousness. Arnold's concept of poetry is not universally accepted, it has some flaws too. Eliot calls it frigid one. Trilling says that Arnold's views cannot be accepted as a definition of poetry but it covers the chief function of poetry. In spite of all adverse remarks, we f must admit that Arnold has taken a very serious view of poetry, unduly restricting its scope. I hope this video helps you, you can note all the points from here. If you like my video, like, comment and share this video dot and also subscribe my channel. And if you need any video on a specific topic then write it on the comment.